Sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we're filming one video, but along the way, we end up dealing with something else. We get surprised, puzzled, and then eventually find the answer. And we want to share that with you as well. So, here's what happened. We were filming a video where we had a circuit with a capacitor connected in series along with two LEDs. Moreover, these LEDs are connected in parallel, facing each other, like this. We finished filming the video and then decided to see if we pass an alternating sinusoidal voltage through this circuit, what does the current flowing through it look like? And this is the result we got. The voltage is shown in blue and it changes sinusoidally while the current changes in pulses. Each of these pulses occurs during the intervals mm -hmm. when the voltage is increasing in magnitude and when the voltage is decreasing. No current flows through the circuit. And here I have to say that we didn't immediately understand what we were seeing. And if everything is already clear to you, that means you really know your electronics. What helped us in our reasoning was switching for, from a sinusoidal signal to a sawtooth wave. Let's draw what the current would look like if there were only a capacitor in this part of the circuit. What would the current be like in this section? But if the voltage changes sinusoidally and the current is the rate of change of voltage and accordingly the charge on the capacitor, so it will be a sine wave shifted forward by 90 degrees. But in the case where the voltage changes as a sawtooth, wave here it increases at a constant rate which means the voltage so the current is constant and positive then the voltage decreases at a constant rate and likewise the current is constant and negative in sign in this section it rises again the current is again positive and constant it's okay we get this kind of step like dependence once again, when there was only a capacitor in this section. Now let's see what happens. If in this section of the circuit there is both a capacitor and two LEDs, connected in series with the capacitor and oriented in opposite directions to each other. And look at what we've got. In the diagram I drew earlier, the current was sometimes positive, sometimes negative. But in the circuit with the LEDs, there appear both current pulses and segments where the current is zero. It is the presence of these segments that we need to explain. And here, two ideas come to our aid. The first idea is to construct the current voltage characteristic of such a section of the circuit with two LEDs placed facing each other. If there were only one LED here, then with forward connection, as long as the voltage is low, the current would be extremely small. We can consider it to be practically zero. But then, upon reaching a certain value, I'll mark it with an asterisk, and for our LEDs, it was around 3 volts. The diode turns on. Well, of course, in reality, the transition is smooth, but I'll draw it as if the current starts increasing very sharply. And with reverse connection, the second LED turns on in exactly the same way. So here, we again have to reach U with an asterisk. Then we need to show that this section of the circuit becomes open if the voltage across it more than the one with the asterisk. That's it. And the second idea is that when we are dealing with a capacitor and LEDs connected in series like this, we can actually forget about the current for now. Because knowing how the voltage across the capacitor changes, we can always calculate it. And let's see. If we apply a sawtooth voltage to the end of this circuit, how 
it will be distributed between the capacitor and the LEDs. That's exactly what we're going to do now. Let's plot one period of the sawtooth voltage on a graph. At first, both diodes are off. The total voltage starts to rise, uh, uh, and along with it, the voltage across the diode switch increases as well. When the voltage reaches the value U with an asterisk, the switch opens. After that, the voltage across it remains constant, while the voltage across the capacitor increases. Now the total voltage begins to decrease. But the capacitor cannot discharge yet, because the current would now have to flow through the other diode, and it is currently blocked by a voltage of the opposite polarity. Therefore, the voltage across the capacitor remains constant, while the voltage across the diodes drops until the second diode opens. Now the switch is open, the voltage across it is constant, and the capacitor is recharging. And this continues until the total voltage reaches its peak value. After that, the switch closes again, the voltage across the capacitor remains constant, and the voltage across the switch increases, changing its polarity. Now let's see what happens in practice. So I've uh, applied the input voltage to the end of this circuit. And I'll be measuring, on one side, the voltage across the LEDs. And on the other side, the voltage across the capacitor. Now let's look at the voltage graphs that result from this. And here we see exactly what was predicted. First of all, the sum of the red voltage across the diodes and the green voltage across the capacitor equals the full blue sawtooth, the voltage across the entire section of the circuit. And here, there are intervals when the diode bridge switches from one conducting state to another. At this time, it is itself closed. No current flows through the circuit, and the voltage across the capacitor remains constant. In other intervals, the diode bridge is open. The voltage across it is constant. The capacitor recharges at a constant rate, and as a result, a constant current flows through the circuit. So, we've sorted out our question. We showed how this can be done. By the way, I need to make a correction. I said that the voltage at which an LED turns on is about 3 volts, that's for blue LEDs, but here we're working with green ones. And for them, this voltage is just over 2 volts. Now, here's a question for the viewers. We're going to apply a positive sawtooth voltage to our circuit varying from 0 to 8 volts, and all of this will happen slowly. One cycle lasts 2 seconds, so let's turn it all on. Yes, of course, a capacitor with a significantly larger capacitance is installed here. And now we can see the blinking. One of the LEDs stays lit for a certain period of time, while the other flashes for a oh, very short moment. And as usual, we ask those who can explain what we're observing here to do so and write their explanation in the comments to this video on YouTube.